Ludicolo sits at zero usage competitively, and stat-wise, Buddy's not looking too hot in basically anything other than base 100 special defense. However, everybody knows that we're a moist pineapple that enjoys the doubled speed that comes with its ability Swift Swim in the rain. With some actually solid speed, Ludicolo is commonly ran as a special sweeper, but we're gonna switch it up. We can bust out Swords Dance to double our attack, and all of a sudden that base 70 isn't too shabby. We're now able to hit super hard with Stab Bullet Seed, which is a multi-hit move that becomes a guarantee to hit at least four times when we throw on the loaded dice held item. We've got Stab Waterfall that's boosted by 50% thanks to the rain, and even some physical ice coverage in Ice Spinner, which is amazing. Gen 9 really gave us the gift of Ludicolo being able to function as a physical sweeper, and we're gonna surprise him. Ludicolo's great because it's like, what do you mean there's a Mexican pineapple duck that zooms around in the rain? It's also cool because Loaded Dice made it so that this thing's physical option is a whole lot better and nobody expects it. Now, if you're into that kind of thing, you should probably hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k. I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And also, today's my birthday, so give me a birthday present. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with Dead Monkey. And as I have myself a little noodly boy, Deoxys, we have an interesting matchup here where I'm basically a hazard lead to set up some Stealth Rock and Spikes. And I'm also kind of feeling like this ape potentially wants to set up with a little Terra on the first turn. So I decide to just kind of stop this thing in its tracks. I'm gonna go for the taunt. No, no bulk up action for you. But instead, they actually just go right for the Rage Fist. And this thing obviously hasn't taken a hit yet, so it's just gonna be at its base power, which is still gonna hurt. I'm a pretty frail fella. I do have Focus Ash and Tack, so I know I could take at least one attack. But at this point, I'm, I'm just kinda, I'm like, I might as well just get my rocks up and then get the hell out of here. Well, in the, get the hell out of here in the way of the Shadow Realm. I see. They do go for another Rage Fist. That is gonna take care of Deoxys. So not a whole lot of value out of crazy noodly space alien, which, it's kind of fine. Regardless, I would have liked a, a Psycho Boost there just for some for some damage or a layer of spikes. But in the long run, you know, it's fine. So I'm just going to go right into the Polytoad here. This little bubblegum fellow with his one hair is here to set up some rain. For whatever reason, this frog likes to stay moist. And with that drizzle, I do have the the uh, damp rock, so it's going to stick around. We're making it nice and, nice and damp out here. So at this point, I'm thinking, you know, maybe they actually end up going for a switch here. So I'm thinking... If they potentially go into Toxapex, I decide to go for the Perish song, which is actually a fun way to play Politoed. He has such a shitty song that it kills you, obviously, in three turns. If they decide to bring in something on a defensive switch, it's gonna kinda it's gonna stir some stuff up, meaning that it allows me a lot of opportunity to try to get in Ludicolo and potentially set up. Not only that, but I've got some other shenanigans on this team that also enjoy some setup. So just kind of putting them on the back foot with the Perish song. At this point, I decide, you know what? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna bring Raiden the Ludicolo here. I know that I can take an attack easy. I still imagine maybe they end up switching, but you know, they don't. They just stay and go for another Rage Fist. But at this point, I haven't touched it yet. So I'm actually still not taking a whole lot of damage from that. And at this point, I'm actually pretty free to just kind of set up a Swords Dance here. Now we know they've working with uh, the Drain Punch and the Rage Fist. I should be fine with that and allow me to make this pineapple nice and pointy. We're collecting rain in our little hat up there, but I'm actually not rain dish instead. I'm obviously a swift swim. We're swimming around in the rain. Now they decide to switch into Toxapex here. This is kind of the defensive fellow we've been worried about. Um, depending on how this thing is built, it definitely, it handles Ludicolo decently, but here's the thing. I, on the physical side, have a nice little, I got five in the chamber, potentially with the bullet seat. Now after the swords dance, we get that doubled attack, and just to ensure that I have a chance to grab a kill here, I'm even going to bust out uh, the Terra Grass. So the combination of Loaded Dice, you know, with that Swords Dance and the increased stab from the Terra, I actually see there's a really likely chance that we grab a kill here, especially if we get the five hits uh, with that Bullet Seed. So we put the flower on our head. Now we're just looking even more ridiculous, a little, little shake. And I do bust out a big old round of bullets and buddy's gonna have some holes in him so looking at that damage it's looking real close so of course loaded dice guarantees four hits but you can still get the fifth and if i it looks like if i get that fifth hit i'm actually gonna be able to grab a kill because after the fourth it lives on one hp but we actually do get the lucky roll and number five is able to take care of toxapex which is amazing that's a big defensive switch in out of the way and we're just out here flexing with our, our crazy pineapple shake once more. We're a furry pineapple and we're not afraid to shake around a bit. Now, as they decide to then bring in Hatterene, I'm like, this is fine. I just bullet seed the hell out of this thing anyways. And, I mean, 
even if it was Sash, obviously it's a good it's stealth rock chip, but also, you know, that's the, one of the benefit of multi-hit moves is just breaking through focus ashes with multiple hits. So, it turns out, however, they are going to light their hat on fire. They actually do have the Terra Fire, which is a risky maneuver, because obviously, you know, I have the Waterfall, but I'm here to Bullet Seed, so that's what they imagine. I do go for that Bullet Seed. Now with that defensive Terra, it is going to be able to take a hit here, kind of no problem. So, here's the thing. I'm mostly worried about like a Mystical Fire or whatever the hell this thing wants to go for. It does now have that boosted, but that's where the Rain actually comes in clutch as well. Uh, being pure Grass type in the Rain, I should be able to take at least one of them. Now, I do get a crit, does hit four times, but it stays alive. And they actually surprisingly go for the Trick Room instead, so... The room is now tricky as hell, and that's bad news if you're a fella that's working on speed. So, it is going to be able to outspeed now, and they can bust out that Mystical Fire, you know, with that added Terra Boost. Luckily, in the rain, we are just barely able to hang on. Now, what comes with that is the special uh, attack drop, which is great when you're a physical Ludicolo. So, we don't even care, I just fire off another Bullet Seed, and that is gonna, that's going to take care of the Hatterene. So, it's good to see that thing gone, but also, most importantly, now they don't have an option for defensive Terra. So, while we now do have a bit of the upper hand here, what's bad is the the trick room is still up. So that's going to make things a little, a little weird. So as they actually decide now to bring in the Dragonite, first of all, does take Stealth Rock, going to get rid of that multi scale, and I am obviously just worried about an extreme speed. Extreme speed doesn't give a shit about how fast anything is. Uh, with that priority, it's going to just be able to pick off Ludicolo. And here's the thing, I do see some value left in the Colo, so I'm actually going to go ahead and switch. I got a perfectly good Corviknight, who is actually a, a bit of a different Corviknight. But I know I can take extreme speeds all day, and that's what this thing is going to go for. So, Corviknight is actually in a pretty good position here. I can take anything this Dragonite wants to throw at me, and I believe there's still two turns of Trick Room. So I can actually try to use their Trick Room against them, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to get nasty here. Now, I am going to go for the Nasty Plot, and yeah, you're seeing that correctly. We're working with... A special attacking <laughs> sweeper Corviknight with Nasty Plot, which is sick as hell. So, they decide to swap into the Volcarona there, as I do go for that Nasty Plot. Thinking some nasty thoughts, and they're probably like, the hell is going on here? Now, bad news is, A, the, the rain goes away. So that actually, I lose my 100% guaranteed Hurricane hit. But, there is still a turn of Trick Room, so I'm actually faster. And while I do just raw dog a Hurricane, without any rain, that is going <laughs> to connect... We do get lucky, and that takes care of Volcarona. And now, honestly, special attacking Corviknight finds himself in a pretty decent position here. We can, we can take hits. While we are slow, we are definitely slow. We can take hits pretty much all day, and the dimensions are going to return to normal. So they decide actually just to go right back into the Dragonite, and that tells me that they must just have you know some type of coverage. So luckily, Stealth Rock is doing its thing. The Dragonite is not looking super healthy, but he's cut the hell up by these... Rocks of Stealth, and they actually do have the Fire Punch, so thank God for being a big metal-ass defensive-ass bird. Fire Punch doesn't do enough, and then I can actually just finish it off uh, with the Flash Cannon. Don't have to risk the Hurricane, because after uh, a Nasty Plot, that is going to is gonna take care of big old derpy dragon there. So, after some leftovers, we are looking relatively you know healthy here with the Corviknight. We're actually able to punch some holes in the squad. But one thing we're keeping in mind is that Ludicolo in the back does still have the ability to switch in. Even low health, they don't have any hazard set up. And also, Politoed is still around. So as they're able to bring in Annihilate here, they are going to be able to outspeed, sadly. And a Rage Fist comes through. Now, again, I haven't touched this thing. I actually live with 15 HP, which is amazing, but I missed the Hurricane, which is, you know, sometimes sometimes you hit him and sometimes you don't. Most of the time, if there's no rain, I feel like you're not gonna. it's not going to work. But... It was worth the shot there, but like, first of all, I didn't even imagine you know, being able to live, but I do, and now I actually just get drain punched you know, right back to right back to the Shadow Realm. So that is going to take care of Corviknight's short little reign of terror, uh, but uh, once again, Ludicolo still being healthy in the back has a pretty good pretty good chance for a little late game sweep, even after even after the ruckus we caused earlier. So I am going to first of all go right back into Politoed again with that damp rock. We're going to have the rain pretty much guaranteed for the rest of the match here. So in terms of what they have left, obviously they've got the Annihilate, but then in the back they have the Aqua Tauros, which we have not seen yet. So Ludicolo actually does look pretty solid here. Now all I have to do is make sure that Politoed can take an attack, which we do easily, then I can fire off a Surf. Also, this is that's supposed that's supposed to be Weather Ball on the thing. I, I need to I, I've been meaning to switch that, but a Surf does the job because what that's going to do is just put it in range to where you know we get a, a solid amount of chip, and all I need to do with the with Ludicolo. Is hit a nice hit a nice little bullet seed. I mean, we've got that extra 
uh, boost from the Terra. It's actually pretty close in terms of, you know, Waterfall in the Rain or a, like a four or five hit Bullet Seed. We're going to bust out the Bullet Seed, easily be able to outspeed, obviously, in the Rain because we out here swift, swift as hell. And it, it looks so four bullet, four bullet Seeds is going gonna, is gonna to be close. If I can get the five, it's guaranteed. But we do actually just have barely enough with the four hits, luckily, to finish off the eight. And that is pretty damn clutch. So at this point now, all they've got left is that one Mon. Ludicolo comes back in, basically revenge of the damn dead Ludicolo, because you know we're just hanging on by a sliver. Um, but once again, in comes the, the Tauros, which I feel like you never even see these elemental Tauros that much anymore. But luckily, it's the water one. So I'm like, hey, this is fine. All I got to do is just grab myself one more clutch little bullet, sleep, bullet seed, and you know, Pineapple come out on top. But thing has different ideas. It turns out it's able to outspeed, and that's because it's actually a Scarf Tauros. And while I need as much damage on this Ludicolo, I'm actually adamant as opposed to a plus speed nature, because, you know, with Swift Swim, I'm faster than most things anyway, but it actually comes back to bite me there. Had I been a plus speed nature, I believe I outspeed, but I don't because of this damn Choice Scarf. Now, the thing is, it's actually fine, because as they went for the Iron Head, Palmot has a fine time taking that. Now, they can outspeed, they can roll the chance for like six flinches in a row. They luckily for us did not get it. And a little double shock action. Not once, but twice. He's going to be able to finish off uh, the, the Tauros. Double his ass up. And that is going to be the end of the map. So I thought that was a fun, ga a fun game. Being able to kind of utilize Ludicolo with the Swords Dance. But then also coming back later just raw dogging some, some nonsense is a fun time. So Ludicolo is fun. I have a whole bunch more shenanigans with this squad. So that's going to take us into our next game because that's how we do it out here. If you've stuck around through this part of the video, you should probably just hit that like button because it helps out the channel and the YouTube algorithm's like, hey, cool, we're gonna show this to more people or something, but let's get into it. All right, so this time my opponent is gonna lead off with the big meaty claws. And with the lead Gliscor, I'm like, okay, Deoxys, this is fine. They're surely gonna go for like either Protect or a Stealth Rock here, right? I imagine they probably try to Stealth Rock as a lead Gliscor and I'm gonna go for the Taunt again. I'm like, no, 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 no rocks for you. Good sir, go ahead and attack me. I bet you won't. And as they fall for the taunt, they they do in fact they just go for the, the knockoff. Which I'm just out here getting uh, unsuccessful taunts, but that's fine. It does get rid of my focus ash, but I mean we're not gonna need that anyway. As I take a whole bunch of damage, and at this point I'm like, all right, Deoxys, here's what we're gonna do best, buddy. Just lay down a, a nice little little set of rocks here and just take a little nap. So <laughs> I do at least get my rocks up, which is like, hey, that's you know that's the main goal, success. Now they do finish me off with another knockoff here. And down goes Deoxys. But it's fine because now I can switch into whatever I want. And guess what, baby? You see this nice, this nice, beautiful blue sky day? Not anymore, because I have a frog who likes to fuck that up. We're gonna bring in the Polytoad here, get that drizzle up, which is always nice. And also, not only that, but also I have the great coverage versus this thing. I know I can take any attack. I can go for an ice beam, but I realize a weather ball actually is super nice as well. Now, they actually decided to just stay in and go for another knockoff, probably thinking maybe I overpredict here. I instead just throw some balls at it. I do have the weather ball this time. It is just more powerful uh, in rain than surf. So that's pretty solid. It also is just going to take care of the Gliscor, which is fantastic. And at this point now, they're free to switch into whatever they like. In comes the Sceptile, who most likely couldn't just swap in here because they probably thought I was going to Ice Beam anyway. And I mean, Politoed doesn't want much to do with that. Even not having my Damp Rock anymore, I'm mean, fine being able to conserve that, bring it back in later and set up some rain for some late game shenanigans. So. Corviknight actually has a really open door to switch in here. There's pretty much nothing Sceptile wants to do. They go for an energy ball, revealing it is going to be a special attacking Sceptile. And Corviknight just laughs at that shit. I'm like, that's fine. It doesn't even it doesn't even hurt. And now, it's nasty time, baby. It's also, it turns out, Shedtail time. Now, here's the thing. I always forget that Sceptile can even do that. It's like, it's basically just him and Cyclozar, right? But they do go for the Shedtail, which is unfortunate. They do bust out the Citrus Berry as well. So they get back some health, and then they're like, hey, I'm gonna head out. And he brings along the little freaking beanbag. As they decide to go into the Ursaluna, or Blood Moon, this thing obviously inherits the the, 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 the the plush. And I am just like, this is fine. I'm just nasty plotting over here. Now, Blood Moon isn't actually horrible for Corviknight. Mostly just because, you know, I resist both of this thing's stabs. It wants to go for a Blood Moon. Doesn't hurt that bad, but also it can't for, go for ground coverage. And now all I gotta do is get that little green fella out of there. But they actually, so they end up going for the vacuum wave, which is fine with me, uh, mostly just because you know, a non-stab, hey, like that isn't gonna hurt that bad at all. I've I've got a pretty pretty bulky core over here. I go for that flash cannon, takes care of the substitute, and yeah, vacuum waving not gonna get you not gonna get you too far, especially after some leftovers. 
your boy is healthy, and honestly, this this Corviknight is very fun. So a video to come on this fella soon, because basically nobody sees this thing coming. So at this point, I can actually outspeed, and as I go for the Hurricane, I know it can at least live one. However, we do get the little little bit of luck. So the downside to Hurricane, obviously the accuracy. Upside, if you do connect, you can get the confusion. And not only that, but we get the full confusion, it hits itself in this little red exposed skull, and... <laughs> That's great, because now I don't take any more unnecessary damage. More than likely, they probably went for the Blood Moon there, but which would have done, I think, with like 30-ish percent. But at this point, they know that they're just going to go down. So as I go for another Hurricane, they actually end up switching into another pretty large threat, being the Backscalibur. So freaking Icy Dragon is actually, I probably, if going for a Flash Cannon there would have been kind of sweet. But I also expected the Hurricane to kill. Turns out it doesn't. It lives with one HP, which is just annoying, most of all. But... After some leftovers, I'm at full health, and I'm like, okay, I mean, in Ice School Crash, neutral hit, it doesn't kill me, because I have base 105 defense, and even though I'm just max HP and special attack, I can take that pretty much no problem. They also run the risk of hitting themselves again as I get the <laughs> another confusion in, they don't, they do not. They, they do get off the Ice School Crash, which, you know, does do a nice little chunk, but then they just died of their own life orb, and then I flinch, which is... Kind of a hilarious sequence of events, I just flinch for no reason, but then I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'm still in the green after some leftovers, and Corviknight's going on a, on a little mini tear here. You never expect the Corviknight Rain Sweeper, but I, we're out here making it happen. So, uh, of course, the main benefit of being Corviknight in the rain is just that fire doesn't work too good. And while they go into the Sarah Ledge here, I'm feeling like at this health, I actually can, I should be able to live a Bitter Blade. Now, that is what they're going to go for. They fire off the, the, the bitterest blade you've ever seen, but... Thank God for the rain dampens the fire. I am able to live. It does heal itself back to full, but I connect on another hurricane. Now check this out. This is the funniest part. It doesn't kill, but I get another confusion, which is honestly just rude of me. I kind of feel bad at this point. So the rain does go away, which is fine. Things are drying up out here, but also the the Corvinite may or may not be done yet. If I can get them to hit themselves in confusion, this is going to turn into a full-on Corviknight showcase. And while they do still have four mons left, they are going to risk the obvious attack here. And I'm like, please hit yourself. But they don't. So <laughs> we, the luck streak ends a little bit there. The Bitter Blade does finish off Corviknight. But we've done some big damage with the fella. And you don't generally see Corviknight being anything other than just like a defensive utility. So fun to get Excalibur to pull out some nonsense. But at this point, it's going to be kind of relying on the pineapple to, 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 to pull us home here. So, Politoed, obviously his main role on the squad is to kind of just come in, get some drizzle, and then get the hell out of here. But also, this thing does extremely well just kind of on its own. It's bulky enough to be able to take hits, and with, you know, rain-boosted weather balls, it actually, it, it does a lot. Now, also, Sarah Ledge doesn't really have anything that it can hit me with to knock me out of here, so I'm just going to fire off a weather ball and just have myself a little time. So... They are going to go for the attack here. They break through the confusion. It does allow the Shadow Sneak to come through, but it doesn't really hurt. It just kind of tickles our little bubblegum tummy. And the Weather Ball is going to be enough to, to finish off the Serelab. So that's half of the squad gone. They now have three Pokemon left. And the main threat, you know, at least to the Politoed, is going to be the Sceptile. So this thing did go for a Shed Tail, so it's it take, it taking a little bit of damage. The Stealth Rock does bring it down to about half, which is great. Because that means that Ludicolo doesn't necessarily even need to set up a Swords Dance here. So first of all, the Energy Ball is going to be able to, to finish off the Politoed. But honestly, kind of exactly what we're looking for. Because now the door is wide open for our crazy Platypus Duck. Is it a Platypus? He's, I don't know. He's got a Duck Bill or something. Kind of a Platypus. Regardless, Pineapple comes in and we're actually in a great spot here. Because with that chip... I should have enough damage to kill with just a straight up Ice Spinner, but I'm actually going to end up busting out the Swords Dance. I say, you know, I can take any attack this Sceptile wants to throw at me, and with that Swords Dance, I easily have enough damage to knock out basically whatever's left. So, they go for the Focus Blast, does bring me down to about half, which is fine. I can then just outspeed being swift as hell out here, boy, and an Ice Spinner is going to take care of the Sceptile. So, Fast Boy is out of the way. And now we get to see kind of what their answer is going to be to the, the, the late game Ludicolo. This thing often does function very well late. Being able to get up the, the rain in just a late little setup on something I know I can take an attack from is exactly what we're looking for. So as they go into the Samurott here, I'm thinking there's a pretty good chance that they're more than likely going to bust out a Terra here. So I'm going to end up going for the Grass Terra of my own. And that's just going to be able to increase the, the bullet seed just that much further. I've got the Swords Dance already, and unless it's going to be a Terra Fire, they more than likely are still going to be able to be taken out 
by the bullet suit here. So they do end up going for the defensive Terra, uh, and it turns out they're actually just going to go for that Terra Dark. They want to just lose the water typing to give themselves a chance uh, to be able to take a grass move. Uh, but luckily for us, the, the Dark Terra pretty much seals the deal, because as you're going to see the bullet seed come through with that Terra boost. This thing is a physical monster, bro. Just one hit is going to do like near a quarter, and we are easily going to be able to finish it with a nice little, little three bullet, bullet seed. So that takes care of the Samurai, and also they just turn their switch off because they're like, yeah, they're not going to have it. <laughs> That's going to be the end of the match. Ludicolo making people frustrated at the end is always what you love to see. And this thing is, is fun because we're just still dancing in their face even though their screen is off. But that was an interesting one. And with that, I do have one more bonus match for you because, you know, why not? This time my opponent has a pretty scary team, mainly some, some pretty fast stuff with some options for setup. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into it. So one thing that's really bad for a Deoxys lead is when I see things like an Espeon in the back. I just feel like they're going to try to swap into it as I go for a Stealth Rock and Magic Bounce it. So instead, I actually decide to switch into the Politoed and get the rain going early. And that actually works pretty well for, for us just because they actually lead off with the Lycanroc, who is, you know, he got the same plan. He's just here to set up some Stealth Rock. I fully imagine this thing is probably going to be Focus Sash, but I just go for the Weather Ball regardless because it's going to be able to knock it down if that's what it's going to be, but it actually just kills it. So no Focus Sash, we just grab ourselves basically a nice little reward for leading off you know, with the Politoed. So that ends up working out for us nicely. Now they're able to bring in the Jolteon, however, and I do not want Politoed to go down quite yet. You never want to try to get the Rain Sweep going super early, and just keeping that thing in the back for insurance to be able to guarantee some rain later is kind of exactly what this team needs. So, knowing that the Thunderbolt is coming, I can actually freely switch into the Palmot here, who is not Volt Absorb, I actually Iron Fist, so I do take actually a nice little chunk from the Thunderbolt there, but then I know that I can pretty much live any attack this thing wants to throw at me, barring like a Terra Ground Terror Blast, but they actually end up going for that Shadow Ball, which we barely hang on, and then I just beat the, beat the devil out of it, like Bob Ross's paintbrush, and that is gonna take care of the Jolteon, which is amazing. So big threat to Politoed, a decent threat to the to the freaking Ludicolo. And I do take some Life Orb Chip, but I actually still hang on, which is pretty solid. I, I kind of thought I was going to go down to that, but I live on two, which is great. Now, this is going to uh, allow them to switch into Maoscarada on the Revenge here, but I realize I can just go for that Mach Punch. With the Life Orb and Iron Fist, there's a chance it ends up grabbing a kill there. It, it does not, however, which is kind of unfortunate, but also, you know, it puts it in a position where, you know, I've got so much chip on it that now I, I don't even need to set up Swords Dance potentially with Ludicolo to just knock it out. It's easily in range with anything, and they can just go ahead and knock off the air. So our fake-ass fighting Pikachu has put in some work, and now, guess who, it, it, honestly, Corviknight always finds great positions to set up here, and that's exactly what we're going to try to do once again. I go into Corviknight just because, obviously, I can take anything it wants to do, they're going to end up going for the U-turn because I don't have my Stealth Rock up. That thing can come back in safely later, and it is still a quick, scary kitty. So, as I go for the Nasty Plot, they're going to end up bringing in Blastoise, who, once again, I've said it before, this thing's new model in Scarlet and Violet looks amazing. He looks way more pissed off and menacing than he has before. And while I set up the Nasty Plot, here's the bad news. So, I'm thinking I probably don't have enough damage with a Hurricane, and that's going to open the door for this thing to go for a Shell Smash. And in the rain... Rain boost in a shell smash. Blastoise can get pretty pretty out of hand here. So they do go for that shell smash. I'm really kind of just hoping for no white herb because if it doesn't get the defensive uh, drop restored, I actually kill with a hurricane here, but it is going to be white herb because you know pretty much every Blastoise does the same thing. It's just going to be a shell smash with the white herb. I do obviously connect on the 100% hurricane and it just barely lives, but this time it looks like my confusion luck has run out. I don't get the confusion, which is bad. Because now we have, we're looking in the face of a very fast Blastoise, and it's it freaking doubled its special attack and speed, and it's also in the rain. So it goes for a nice little cowabunga ass surf, and that is gonna kill the Corviknight. So not as much of a, a Corviknight tear today, but at this point now, we've got ourselves in a position where I have a couple different options. First of all, I could go Deoxys, who is Sash, but then I'm like, should I actually, they yeah, got the rocks up, so not super ideal. I decide. I'm going to go into Ludicolo here, because that actually puts me in a spot where, even with the Shell Smash, they're kind of forced to go for an Ice Beam, which is neutral, but I know I can live it, which is great, and then I can fire off the Bullet Seed. So, a little bit of a crisis averted uh, with the Blastoise there. Luckily, you know, we got the amount of chip we did with the Corviknight, because 
the bullet seed was in range to kill. It actually is faster, important to note, because after a shell smash, and my adamant ass is in fact actually outspeed by, uh, outsped by a Blastoise, so... The bad news is, that was my last turn of rain, and that is gonna open the door for Meowth Karata to just come right back in here and easily outspeed and kill me, but Ludicolo is not gonna be done yet. I know that I can switch back in, at least, I guaranteed, and I'm like, you know what I can do? I'm just gonna go right into Politoed here, who... All I really need to do is honestly set the rain back up again. I can just get that drizzle. If they want to go for the, the flower trick here, I go down. But honestly, that's fine, because once I bring back in Ludicolo in the rain, it's it's kind of a little, little sweep action. But they actually end up going for the U-turn there, which is a good play. Kind of just a nice little middle ground. It's going to be able to now allow them to switch into Espeon. And, I mean, Espeon, kind of scary. At this point, I should be able to take an attack from it, which I'm mostly excited about because all I need to do is get off a weather ball and as they go for the Psy Shock, I actually just barely live. I live with the full HP which is crazy. Then allows me to go for that weather ball which is exactly what we want because now with that little bit of chip, Ludicolo is looking much better. So they finished me off with one more Psy Shock here and that live was again super valuable just because now Ludicolo can come in safely and fast and get a bullet seed is just a guaranteed kill rather than having to worry about like a maybe five hit doing the job uh, but in comes poncho we are dancing again because it is, all, it is always a party in the pineapple world and i can't outspeed and go for that bullet seat so i do actually have to fire off a couple of them the five was definitely not going to be able to do the job if i didn't get the chip so good to see the espion out of the way that is a very uh, another fast kitty they got the they got the espion and the meows Garado. so at this point now they've got two mons left first of all they do have the meows Garado. And that is what they're going to end up going into here, who is, if it's Scarf, is going to be able to outspeed me. So I'm like, hey, go ahead and don't be Choice Scarf. That would be kind of nice for me. Turns out it is not, and Swift Swim clutches it out, allows me to outspeed. I did go for the Bullet Seed, just because anything I click pretty much kills it, and Bullet Seed's just fun. So, you know, that finishes off the Meowth Garada. And with that, all they have left is going to be the Cinderace. So, I imagine this thing is probably not Scarf. If it was, they would have gone into it earlier. But now, also, I just do have the uh, the nice little super effective rain-boosted water hit. Don't even need the Swords Dance. That is going to be able uh, to take care of the Cinderace. And that is going to be the end of the match. So Ludicolo is going to finish it off for us in a nice little fun fashion. So thank you guys very much for watching. Had a lot of fun with this one. Ludicolo is just always a cool Monda feature. And uh, love to see it. Catch you guys later.